Welcome back to another edition of Waiting for the Fall TV. This week on the show, we join my wife Karen as she tries for a gobbler in the third week of 2010 Wisconsin's turkey season. This hen was the first bird that showed this morning. Although there was a Jake about 200 yards behind her over across on the other ridge, maybe he'll come in and give us a shot. Well, that Jake came right into our decoys, 15 yards, but unfortunately Karen couldn't get the right angle with the shotgun to get a shot on him, so he got a pass. We waited for a couple more hours and didn't have much action, no gobbling that morning, so we decided we were going to do a little run and gunning. And it wasn't but a few minutes after we set up that these two big strutters came in.
But for all my purring and soft calling, I could not get them to come any closer than about 55 yards, and I realized after they started to move off that we had a barrier between us. There was a big ditch that had a bunch of fallen trees pushed into it that I didn't realize was there. So essentially we cut ourselves off from these gobblers. Had we set up right down on the road they were on, should have had an easy shot at them. Now while neither of these birds gobbled, the one strutted for about the whole 20 minutes they were around us. They were trying their darndest to get to us, but that barrier was just blocking them. It's too bad we couldn't have set up a little bit differently. I guess the excitement was just a little bit too much for Karen. She decided to take a nap. Break, now she's napping in the blind. Blind Ambition Bale Blinds. Camouflage dates back hundreds of years and has evolved greatly over the recent years. Blind Ambition Hay Bale Blind goes a step further. Instead of blending into the environment, it is a normal part of the environment. Wildlife only recognize hay bales as harmless objects. So take advantage and hunt from the comfort of a spacious blind that offers superior concealment and its appearance is so commonplace that wildlife sees it as another hay bale. Order yours today at baleblinds.com. Pronghorn Productions capturing your once in a lifetime memory. Whether it's turkey hunting in the Wisconsin woods or fishing the wilds of our country's beautiful lakes and rivers, have us capture those moments on tape and edit them into a wonderful keepsake DVD for you to share these once-in-a-lifetime events with friends and family. Have a special hunting or fishing trip planned? Consider us for capturing your event to keep those memories alive for a lifetime. Pronghorn Productions offers professional videography and editing services for all of your outdoor needs. So, for the best video and editing, call my dad at 438-725-0. Or visit our website at www.pronghornproductions.net. Now I could have swore Karen was napping in the woods last time when we went to the break. Now she's napping in the blind. Okay, so I may have been joking when I said big gobbler, but no more than a half hour later, here's a big gobbler with four hens and a jake out in the field strutting around. Let's see if we can't get him to come in. Now the gobbler and his hens moved about 75 yards behind us, but they never came any closer than that. The hens are actually moving to the right of the screen and the gobbler's just kind of hanging out because I'm doing a little calling, he's checking out our decoys, but I can never get him to break away from his hens. Time now for Waiting for the Falls Weekly Product Spotlight. This week's product spotlight is on Blind Ambition Bale Blinds. I'm here with Tim Knoll, owner and operator of Blind Ambition Bale Blinds. And Tim, uh, you've got two blinds on the market now, correct? Yeah, we've got the Outfitter Blind, which is the large, roomy and uh, heavy frame version that's intended for putting out in your field permanently. And then we've also got the Portable, which is a blind that goes together quickly, goes in a bag, and you can take it on a hunting trip or hunting public land. So those two two versions that we have now. And you can go to your website and see both versions, what uh, what the dimensions are, what they all entail, correct? Yeah, and how, they, how they're how they assembled, and, and that gives you a good uh, insight into the type of construction that we're using on the on the blinds in terms of the frame and the coverings, mm -hmm. and uh, a pretty good overall uh, introduction well, for to For deer it. hunting particularly, and turkey hunting, our goal was to make a blind that actually look like a bale. Mm -hmm. the, there's a lot of realism built into this, including even the, the bale net wrap that we put on the outside of the blind, but we did our best to make it so that the deer and the turkeys would not spook from the blind and would regard it as part of the natural environment. Right. And one of the advantages that we've seen is that, you know, when you, typically in the past when we've seen these nice deer feeding out 100 yards away from the edge of the woods, you say to yourself, well, my goodness, 
it's great, but I have no way to hunt them out there. Well, that has changed now because these uh, bale blinds are very effective placed out in the middle of a food plot or out in the middle of a crop field or a pick crop field. Uh, they really come into their own in early season when deer are quite often right at the beginning of bow season and also in late season when deer feed before uh, the end of daylight uh, when their reserves are down in cold weather and they really need to to put away some groceries. So um, the results that we're getting with the bale blinds are pretty remarkable. If you go to the website you'll be able to see some of the deer that have been harvested and we just got done posting our 2011 turkey results which were beyond our expectations. Uh, people are just having a lot of good hunting success. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about the bale blind is because animals are so used to seeing it out in the middle of a field you don't have to brush it in like you would a pop-up blind. Pop-up blind matter of fact you really can't set up out in the middle of a field for deer because they're going to pick it off right away. They don't like the looks of it. With the bale blind they're used to seeing them so you can get away with that. You don't have to find a spot in the corner or something like that. To... Actually we've found they're more effective if you put them at least 50 yards out from the edge of the woods. Sure. Uh, deer a lot of times when they enter the field will move pretty quick right on the edge and they, they don't relax and they don't slow down their walking until they get 30, 40, 50 yards out. They start to get a little safety feeling from being able to see danger around them. But for some reason they like to gravitate towards the bales and uh, they might look at them as some form of cover or something and I, I don't know the reason but uh, that's been our experience now with about four years of using them uh, for whitetail. It, our recommendation would be to get them 50, 60 yards out away from the edge. And one of the things, you, the advantages we have is that you know very often the deer are feeding and they're relaxed when you're seeing them from the bale blind. So if you're an archer or a crossbow hunter you typically have the ability to range that animal while they're walking or standing still before you take a shot. So it does extend your effective range. You know, if you know precisely that deer is 36 yards, you can shoot at it with confidence if you're a practiced archer. And you're building yeah. everything in-house, so right. your quality control is, you know, if it, something doesn't look right to you, it doesn't go out the door. Nothing so. imported, and, and uh, the two guys that are, are doing this for us were both friends of ours that were laid off, so we feel pretty good about that too. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. You've got people that are working that you can trust and you right. can rely on. So that's You've great. got a new blind now that's coming out for the fall. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, we do have a new blind coming out. It's going to be uh, somewhat in between the size of the portable and the outfitter. It uh, is a pretty nimble blind. The total weight is about 75 pounds. Because of the way it's constructed, we're able to try and build the uh, ability to shoot geese and waterfowl in a field decoying situation. And so we have the, uh, the, what we would call the goose panel as an option available on the new blind. And we're pretty excited about that. We've been through a lot of trade shows and there's been a ton of people ask us for this. And uh, so we've been working on it and tried a number of different variations, but we're pretty happy with what we got now. We'll be making that available uh, for the fall of 2011 as well. Uh, the new blind, I believe, we're going to call the Sportsman with the idea that there's more than one species that you can take out of it. Sure. So, yeah, it'll work equally well for geese, turkeys, and deer. And deer as well, right. Mm -hmm. And still light enough that if you decide you want to take it on a hunting trip, it takes a little longer to put it together than the portable, but still in an hour you can have it up and ready to hunt. Mm -hmm. And if you consider the fact that it doesn't require any brushing in, it's still a realistic Sure. Time frame. You've got a couple of neat things that I noticed on this new one, uh, along with the flip down one. You've got a viewing panel as well on the back side of it. Yeah, the idea with that is essentially was when you were goose hunting to be able to follow the uh, flocks of geese that were behind the blind and might be approaching you from the back. I mean, typically when they come in, they're going to be coming into the wind, which is where you would have your decoy set. So right at the end when they're finishing, they'll be out in front of you. But they won't always be out in front of you when you're first trying to get them coming towards you so sure. you've got to be able to see behind you but as we worked on that viewing panel we could see the possibilities of how that might be nice to have for a deer hunting situation as well mm -hmm. and uh, maybe even for the people that want to do filming out of the blind uh, gives you a little bit more of a panoramic view so yeah. that was the big thing that I noticed about it was was the fact that now you know if, if I lowered that down a little bit in a deer hunting or turkey hunting, hunting situation 
I've got full access with my camera, so all I got to do is swing it around and pan it on them, and I can pan straight through. I don't have to worry about going from window to window or right. trying to move the tripod or anything, which is great. I really love so that. So check them out at bailblinds.com. They got both current models on the website, and the new model will be up. Uh, what do you figure? End 30 of June? days. Yeah. yeah, first of July. First of yeah. July, you'll have the new model on. You can see everything on there that I missed with the camera or couldn't show you. Uh, this new model, I think, is going to be great. Uh, it's going to be great for the waterfalls. It's going to be great for everybody that's. Uh, in a deer, turkey, and waterfall. So that's our product spotlight for this week. Uh, it's been three weeks since we've had a product spotlight on the show, and we've been kind of saving this one because it's kind of uh, a bigger uh, deal here on the show. Uh, Tim's going to tell you a little bit of how you can benefit from it. Well, we're really happy to be working with Chris and waiting for the fall television. And so what we'd like to extend to the, to the viewers is that if you would order a blind from us uh, before the 1st of July, we would have a $50 discount on any of the blinds that we've got available. And uh, hopefully that'll put a little savings in your pocket and make you think a little more about trying one of these. That's great, Tim. I appreciate that a you lot. Bet, Chris. And when you call in, just remember, mention uh, the show Waiting for the Fall so you get the discount. And uh, Tim, you know, I appreciate everything you've done for us and I wish you continued success. Now let's get back to the turkeys and see if Karen can get one. So after Karen heard that first gobble, I waited about uh, 60 seconds and I called again and he gobbled again and he was getting closer. We had the blind position not quite right for the situation. They were coming in from behind. So what we did was pick the blind up and turned it about 45 degrees. And not long after we had done that, this is what showed up. Okay, well, as you saw in the video, I had a gobbler, a Jake, and a hen come in, and we didn't kill the gobbler, but it was my fault. I misjudged the yardage. We're hunting out of a blind, and when you're hunting out of a blind, and I know this, and I should have known this this morning and grabbed the rangefinder. It's really tough to judge distance when hunting out of a blind because you're looking through such a small opening in the blind. It's no defect in the blind. It's just a fact of hunting from blinds that you, you really should have a rangefinder even when you're shotgun hunting. You know, I always carry one when I'm bow hunting and we should always have one when we're shotgun hunting too out of the blind because I thought that gobbler was 30 yards. <clears throat> And we probably should have waited because he was coming right up in. But we had him on camera. Karen was out the window. She was steady. Uh, yesterday, you know, we had a Jake come in to 15 yards to the decoy, and Karen couldn't shoot him because of the way the windows were situated. We didn't have the windows quite right. 
and I figured I don't want her to have to switch a window. She's set up, ready to go. He's in range. Kill him. Well, as you saw, the shot went a little bit to the right of him. He flew up into the trees, and he actually got stuck in a bush down in here. And Karen said, oh, he's flopping. I said, you missed. No, he's flopping. And I ran down in there. I didn't see any sign of him. But then when Karen came down in, we started looking around. We found a bunch of breast feathers. And he had actually got stuck in this bush, I think halfway back to the ground. And that's what the flopping was about. But uh, other than losing a few breast feathers, uh, I don't think uh, he's any worse for the wear. But it's, it's a learning lesson, a learning tool. And we need to, I mean, really get across the point of, of bringing a rangefinder anytime you're hunting out of a blind, unless you actually pace off the yardage. We paced it off on the way back to the blind after looking for him. 45 yards, I believe, is what we figured where he was standing. And she's shooting a 20 gauge and 45 yards is just, it, it, that's not within a real good range for, for a 20 gauge. So it happens, it happens to the best of us. You haven't turkey hunted long if you've never missed a gobbler. So just bear that in mind when you're watching this. Don't uh, be too hard on Karen because she feels awful bad. And I feel bad too because I, misjudged the yardage and, and told her he was in range and he wasn't so but there's more of them out there I mean we worked we had one this morning that we saw that uh, had what five hens with them four hens and a jake worked those birds for over an hour this morning and they just kept doing zigzags in the field the closest they ever got was 70 yards but uh, it was fun to see them but then this one started gobbling about uh, 20 minutes after they moved off I guess and they were gobbling way back down in the woods and they finally slowly eventually came up but once again you always got to have either know the distance or have a handy rangefinder so that you know what the distance is uh, you know and if, if I'd have zapped him with the rangefinder and saw he's 45 or 48 yards we'd have waited obviously until he got another 15 20 yards closer but Don't feel bad. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But before we go, I want to make sure you check out Blind Ambition and their bail blinds. They've got three models now, and they introduced their new model July the 1st. And i got to say, they really open up a world of possibilities for me when hunting open food plots and open fields for both deer and turkey. So make sure you check them out. Mention the name of the show, and you'll get a $50 discount on any blind you purchase. Till next time, take a youngster in the outdoors, pass on our hunting and fishing traditions to the next generation. I'm Chris Kittleson, and for everybody here from Waiting for the Fall, we'll see you next time. Waiting for the Fall would like to thank our fine sponsors for making this show possible. Blind Ambition Bail Blinds, a new innovative twist on ground blind hunting. The Rip Shot from Rip Archery. You tune your bow, now tune yourself. Two Fire, the most trusted name in broadheads and releases. sure to stay tuned for the buggy outtakes after the credits. I could never do before from a tree stand or a different blind style. Fields and food plot hunting on both deer and turkeys. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> Till next time, take a youngster in the outdoors. Hopefully it's not going to be buggy like this. If it is, make sure you've got a lot of off and maybe a thermosel and something else. But I'm Chris Kittleson. For everybody here waiting for the fall, 
the gnats and the bugs. We'll see you next time. Bugs. I missed him? I think you missed. Huh?